Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, <coughs> pardon me. I uh, hope you guys are all dealing well with uh, daylight savings time now that we're into it. Uh, I mean, really, after the first night, it's, it feels the same. Like, it's the one night you lose an hour, and then after that, it's just kind of like, okay, this is just the time now. Uh, yeah, that's my little thought of the day. Uh, so let's hop into Ezra. So uh, we finally actually met Ezra. Very exciting. Seven out of ten chapters in, and we finally met him. Uh, so I'm kind of skipping a large chunk of chapter seven. Uh, we we read through the first little bit, kind of introducing uh, Ezra and what he's up to. He's now going to Jerusalem. Uh, this is after the bulk of the Israelites have left to Jerusalem. Uh, and then the king gives him a letter, kind of reminiscent of, uh, what was it, King uh, Cyrus, who originally freed the Israelites. Uh, so just kind of like, hey, this is Ezra, he's a person, he's going to Israel, give him all the money and stuff he needs to do his thing. Uh, that's, yeah, that's kind of summarizing it. Uh, and whoever does not obey that and help Ezra, uh, it can be punished by death or banishment. Uh, so just, you know, he's on his side. <clears throat> Sorry again. Uh, what we're actually focusing on is the last two, uh, two verses of the chapter, uh, which kind of, I don't know, it, it, it helps, it diverges a little bit from the general, like, trust in God, he's gonna make way your path type of thing that I feel like a lot of this book has been kind of leaning towards uh, and I don't want to be redundant in that uh, but let me read the verses now that we're two minutes into this so uh, Ezra chapter 7 verse 27 and 28 praise be to the Lord the God of our ancestors who has put it into the king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem in this way and who has extended his good favor to me before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials, because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel to go up with me. Uh, so the main thing I want to kind of hit at is verse 27. Uh, Praise be the Lord, the God, for uh, putting this into the king's heart. So this is, uh, like we all know, the king of uh, Babylon, Persia, whatever it is now. Uh, and he's not uh, Jewish. He's not an Israelite. Uh, he's not from what the verses have said, he's not really like actively worshiping the God of Israel. But here Ezra is kind of praising what God has put into his heart. Uh, and I just kind of a thought that I think of, uh, you know, like we all talk about like, we want God to use us. Uh, and I mean, we do want God to use us. But uh, the idea that God is going to use anyone to accomplish his will, his uh, work in the world, uh, in our lives. So, I don't know, it's just something I found, like, fascinating. Or I've, I've seen that before and I've heard that before, but <clears throat> just kind of the, the idea that, yeah, God's going to use anyone. Uh, maybe that person you hate that is never going to go to church, he's going to teach you something that you would not have learned at church. Uh, something of, of God. I mean, obviously, people can teach you things that are not in church. But, yeah, just don't be uh, don't be afraid to listen for what God has to tell you in every circumstance. Uh, whether it's at church, whether it's <clears throat> in school, whether it's wherever it may be. Sorry, my voice is very froggy this morning for some reason. Uh, yeah. Yeah. God can use all our circumstances, and he can use all the people around us. So, if you feel like <clears throat> God's telling you something, even if it's from someone who's not Christian, uh, <clears throat> pray about it and see what the Bible says about that. If it backs it up, uh, yeah, God's there for us, and he'll help us any way he can. That kind of circles back to the rest of the stuff I've talked about in Ezra, so... It all ties together. Yeah. All right, uh, have a great weekend.